Good morning. Welcome to Q and Amico. I'm Kara and I'm here to answer your questions. While I'm doing it, I'm going to do a little bit of glazing. Those of you who have been tuning in um, more than once in the past couple weeks have seen me work on this. I was decorating it with the uh, Amico watercolor underglazes, which we call smugs for semi-moist underglaze, and Amico chalks. And I'm going to put a clear coat of glaze. So there are a couple different ways that I can uh, that I can do the glazing on top of this. And the easiest, and what I generally uh, suggest if people are worried about smudging because the chalks and the smugs are uh, very delicate and they can smudge very easily. So what I do is frequently I will uh, uh, re-bisque the wear. So I'll fire it again to Kono 4 and that helps to uh, really get the, the color to stay put and it's less, less likely to smear. But today I wanted to show you guys one of the things that I do. So this, this whole process has been quite a process. Uh -oh. So I'm going to apply HF9 and I'm not sure why I'm not able to see uh, our Cone 5-6 group, but uh, I can see our low fire group. So, uh, okay, good. David says that he can see the high fire group, so if any comments come in, he will relay them to me. So what I do, let me switch over to an overhead view. So what I do is I have a clean sponge and I have my HF9, and I know it's obscured, but it is HF9 Zinc Free Clear. And I have a little bit in the lid and I use my clean sponge and very, very gently apply glaze with a patting motion onto the wear. So while I'm doing this, I am welcoming any comments, any questions. Let me know what is your favorite way of applying glaze so that it won't smear. Do you bisque or do you do the sponge method? Do you pour? Do you dip? I'm going to make a little more glaze here. So I'll just do this for a first coat and then I'll go back and apply the second and third coats of glaze with a brush just like normal. And I'm checking my brush, my sponge, I'm sorry, not my brush, I'm checking my sponge to make sure that I'm not getting any chalk on there that'll transfer. And of course, when you spend a lot of time on underglazing and decorating, you don't want to end up with it smeared if you can avoid it. So let's see, what are some other things? I did want to tell you, those of you who are in the 5-6 group, uh, I know that one of the concerns has been that the 5-6 group is public. And so your friends and family can see your posts, which can be rather disconcerting when you're trying to get feedback on something that is going to be a surprise for someone. Or if you are uh, selling wares, you might not want people to know exactly how you do your glazing. I understand all those concerns. Uh, and I think that we are going to take the 5-6 group private 
within the next couple weeks. The thing is that once we go private, I do not think we can go back to being a public group. But as big as the group is, I think that it may be a, it may be a, an advantage to uh, be a private group. So I'm almost done with this. Now I'm going to put mint satin mat on the inside. Uh, Joni just wanted to know what glaze that is. Okay, Joni is asking what glaze this is, and I'm putting HF9 Zinc Free Clear on this. This will get fired to oops, this will get fired to cone five. And uh, Zinc Free Clear is, is the one that we recommend for using with underglazes, particularly with the smugs and the uh, uh, chalks. Any kind of greens, the older greens, tend to uh, turn brown if you use Zinc Clear. And all of our glazes, all of our clear glazes, let me rephrase, all of our clear glazes are zinc free with the exception of HF10 Clear. Now this is HF9, so it is zinc free, which means that it works quite well with a variety of underglazes. So I'm trying to get a little bit more into all the crevices. There we go. Make sure I get kind of a, an even coating. are. So that's my first coat of clear. Now, while that dries, I'm going to apply SM42 mint to the inside. Sally Roper asked, hi Kara, glad I caught you. I have a 10 pound bucket of dry lavender, which I mixed to instructions. It has hard panned horribly. What can I do to fix this? Uh, Sally, contact our tech support team. They can walk you through any hard panning issues. Uh, make sure to check your specific gravity before you uh, contact them and let them know what the specific gravity is. Uh, hard panning usually happens, not always, but usually happens when there's too much water. So our tech support team, uh, you can find uh, information on either calling or emailing them. If you go to our website, go to the very bottom of our website and it says contact us and uh, you will find all the information for contacting our tech support team on that page. Uh, but it is a process that I am not ready to go into details on uh, while I'm doing the live stream. Thank you, Sally. Best of luck. I'm sure that they will be able to help you. I know that that can be a possibility with some of the dipping glazes, but uh, I know that they can help you with the hard panning. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you do email our tech support team or you contact them through our website, uh, please check your spam filter or your junk folder on your email for any responses. It may be up to a week until they respond to you, but we have had an ongoing uh, issue with a lot of emails from Amico ending up in spam folders. Uh, we have some extremely aggressive spam filters out there in the world, and for some reason it has decided that Amico uh, looks like spam. Uh, I have even found Amico emails uh, in my own spam filter at work which seems kind of impossible because it's coming from within the building, but it does happen sometimes. So please check your spam filters for uh, emails. 
So that's one coat of the mint. I'm going to let that set up. And now, now that the clear glaze that I sponged on is dry to the touch, uh, I should be ready to put some more clear on there, but I'm going to wait a little bit for my satin mat to dry. Do we have any other questions today? Sure do. Cool. Uh, Rachel mm -hmm. wants to know, does the sponging make it thinner or thicker? Uh, so Rachel asked if sponging it on makes it thinner or thicker. It goes on roughly like one coat, but what it does is it doesn't drag across the chalk. Sorry. It doesn't drag across the chalk or the smug, so you're not going to have smudging. Now, if you have, if you're doing a this and you're using a glaze that is extremely runny, it will drag on firing. It'll drag the underglazes, but you won't have smudging when you're applying, which is what I'm trying to prevent. So it counts as one coat. It's not thicker. It's not thinner. I just use it straight out of the jar. You can thin it if you like, but I feel like that's uh, a little uh, more likely to have smudging. So I just use it directly out of the jar as is, and it counts as one coat. I mean, it is a little bit uneven over here, but that's okay. I'm just going to, I'll just dab a little more on there. You'll find, for the most part, I'm not really a stickler about a lot of glazing things. Uh, it's a matter of feel after a while, but uh, I certainly didn't enjoy glazing for a long time, and then I was doing it a lot. And really the key to feeling comfortable with glazing and getting a good sense of, of how thick it needs to be, how, how it behaves, is honestly to just do it a lot. So make lots of tests. It's just like when you're throwing on the wheel and you make lots of pots, glaze lots of pots. Uh, you, will get, you will get a better sense of how thick things need to be. Do we have any other questions? Uh, those were all kind of on the on that page. That's fine. I think. Uh, So now that that, coat, that uh, sponged coat has dried, I'm going to brush on my subsequent coats. And then I don't worry about smearing the underglaze because it's already underneath that first coat. Now, sometimes people ask me about how I go over and over areas with the brush, and it looks to them like I'm applying more than a single coat when I do that, but I'm really just smoothing out the glaze when I do that more than applying more. Uh, again, with the getting a feel for it, uh, I like to go over to make sure that I have a nice even coating and that gives me better results, less, less likely to be patchy. So I'm going to wait a little bit. The green is almost ready for, a ne for the next coat. It, is an, it, it has been really lovely here in Indiana. Spring has come around, but we've got some cooler weather at the moment and it's not so bad.
As I've said in other streams, I also glaze differently when I'm glazing for the videos. So when I'm glazing in the studio, I generally have four or five pieces that I'm glazing all at the same time so that I can uh, move on to another piece while I wait for the first one to dry. Uh, I make marks or or oftentimes I put my my pieces on a piece of uh, uh, paper towel or a, or a piece of uh, newsprint and then I'll write next to it what glazes I'm using and how many coats if I need to keep track of things like that. It's an easy way for me to uh, keep track. So I'll just put a hatch mark uh, and that's an easy way to keep track of what you're doing without having to uh, have lots of different things going on. Just a little piece of paper and writing directly on it. And then sometimes if I'm wanting to keep track of a lot of different things going on, I will actually take a photo of the glazed piece and then it has the information right next to it. I know a lot of people do that with post-its. It's a great way to keep track of what you're using. So these are still drying. Do I have any other questions? How are things going? Let me see if I can't, um, if I can't find, nope, I cannot get to the, Five, six group. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit more. I've got um, one more coat of clear that needs to go on. Uh, I'm trying to think of other questions that have come up lately on Facebook. Uh, we've had questions about uh, jar fill, and I don't have my uh, other jar nearby, so I'll talk about that next week. And um, uh, material issues, and of course the thing that I'm most excited about, which I will be touching on again next week, is the new Potter's Choice Flux Glazes. Those um, are in production right now, and they will be shipping out to uh, our distributors, I expect no later than early June. So everybody here is very excited about that. I hope you guys are too. And I don't have my samples because I gave them all back because somebody was going on a was going to do a demo. And do we have any other questions? Nope. Frank's process and cuts up cardboard. Mm -hmm. He puts each piece on and the notes go on there and it also acts like a third hand. That's a good trick. So David was saying that Frank uses pieces of cardboard cut up uh, and writes on them what he's, uh, what he's glazing with and then it also kind of works as a third hand. Yeah, you can nudge things around, move them from place to place. That's a great idea. Hi, Ellen. Hi from Denmark. Hope everything is going well. So uh, there's lots of great ways to keep track of things and keep everything uh, moving in the studio. Multiple pieces at once. So I'm going to fire this and I'm going to bring it back in two weeks to show you how it goes. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this went with all of the smugs and the chalks together in one piece. But I'm going to let you all go, and I'll see you next week for uh, Glazing with Amico. I'm going to talk about teapots and some tricks for glazing teapots. Making teapots is tricky enough. Glazing them can be even trickier, especially with brushing glazes. So I will talk to you all about that then. If you have any questions, please go ahead and drop them in the chat, and I will check them later. And thanks so much for tuning in and joining me on my glaze adventures. Have a great week.